What types of SLV will be released over the course of season two? And don't worry if you can't say anything. About um, so I, I think the, uh, I, I, I don't know offhand, the, the first variants will actually be quite similar to the SLV, but just variants okay. of it. And there Excellent. will be others to come down the line. That's really cool. Will they, uh, as far as you imagine, I don't want to go into too much detail if I can't, but uh, will they just handle differently and, and things like that rather than... Yeah, uh, uh, details to be sorted and also okay. do different things. Great. Hey, Braben, did, did your employees forget about what you promised? Well, I guess it's better late than never, right? Right? After nearly and literally six years of farting in their fallout shelters over at Waddle headquarters, either by executive demand or more likely Illuminati order to distract the populace of the impending Targoid menace, they have finally squeezed out a new type of buggy by copy-pasting the latest Halo game. I mean, the latest Halo game back in 2021, when finally, in year 3000, the copyright expired. I don't think too hard about that fact, the world is already fucked, so consume and ignore the copyright law gets molested by Disney and other companies, okay? So, the Scorpion. The release of this monstrosity would have been a bigger surprise if not for that asshole Yamix and those pesky anonymous sources that provide the fucker with cool information. That piece of shit leaked the visuals and more information about six months prior to this thing's release. Now, oh, how well. Oh, by the way, if you have any behind the scenes information, I gladly will take a look at it. Just shoot me an email. And speaking of which, there is still an SRV by the name of Ryan or something in the game files. Well, we'll see when that appears, of course. If if ever. Frankly, I struggle to decide what tone and approach I should take when talking about this new thing. I could do a roleplay crap and talk about how pointless a company like Vodal is and how, like lazy cumsicles, they churn out cosmetics for the last SRV so that there is no need to make a new one. So now that we have this scorpion thing, can we assume that it's like those new Star Wars movies? Or should I talk about that David Braben quote I showed at the intro and development of the game as well as what this SRV means? Mm. Well, before I bash this dead horse's skull in and suck out the mushy brain goop, let's kiss it before it gets fucked. So, stats. Uh, stats. Uh, yeah, frankly, no one gives a flying fuck about stats. Well, not really. Actually, when somebody talks about numbers in English, I just want to strangle a bitch. Like, 1400. It's just stupid. Is it too hard to actually say 1400? Nope, we got involved needless complex. <sighs> okay, fuck it. Yes, yes, the stats. So, the price of the scorpion is who gives a fuck, which is justified by the armor and shield of the vehicle, which are what the shit amount of points, and finally it deals go fuck yourself points of damage per second. Seriously, no one cares. What you care about is that, yes, this costs more than the Scarab, but the amount, as long as it's not an eye-watering bullshit, will not bother you. See, by the time you get an SRV for your ship, you already have amassed at least a few million, which is when you really will not be bothered by any sub-100,000 purchases. It's like the lower class poverty in modern day through the eyes of the world's 1%. The bottom line is, this is supposed to be the Pew Pew SRV, an armored vehicle for combat, for annihilating the space legs man. Oh, and yeah, I kinda actually forgot to mention this, but this will be something that you care about. It's an Odyssey exclusive. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. But first, it's an armored vehicle. Now, forgive my Latvian-ness, but when I think of an armored car, which this literally is supposed to be, and it's supposed to not only protect the users from a stray dildo cannon attack, but also provide life support. Um... Why the fuck does this thing have a massive glass windshield? Jesus fucking Christ, look at this. This is a growler. Well, yes, that too, but I meant this is a growler. This is an old military vehicle. And this is a modern military transport. These days, some are often equipped with some outboard cameras too, especially for night driving. Now tell me, if a modern man can realize that the sheet of steel can protect one's ass better than the sheet of glass, why would the super advanced future man not cover his fucking vehicle with a federal recruit brains and leave nothing exposed, relying on pure camera vision, like what they do in, let's say, Evangelion? Frankly, I'm both shocked and disgusted on how low and downright retarded human beings could get in the future according to Frontier developments, but hey, if putting a massive glass house on literally every ship out there even 
even the ships that are made for intership course only through the lasers on daily basis is good enough, then who the fuck am I to say that this is not a military vehicle? Space Jesus fucking Christ, help me. Okay, well, returning to the good, the thing is clearly more armor than shields, notably tougher. The gun, though, well, now here we come to a problem. See, it shoots more of the load and certainly will spunk out more projectiles than a teenage boy discovering furry porn. Uh, I mean, DeviantArt and Instagram. But to balance it, and yes, I think this is what Frontier calls balancing, the gun also has a ramp up fire rate, meaning that the longer you hold the trigger, the faster it will start shooting. However, usually in games that has this mechanic, they'll also pair it with decreasing accuracy. As in, you start precisely, but as the fire rate goes up, the accuracy goes down. Meaning that, yes, at full ramped up speed, you'll deal a lot more damage, but good luck hitting anything far away. Yeah, uh, Frontier doesn't believe in that kind of established and fair balance. Um, oh wait, they're not- <laughs> They are not disembarking! Okay, fuck it, let's just shoot the ship. Let's just shoot the ship, let's see how long it takes for me to destroy Okay. Um, <laughs> this is interesting. Yep. Scorpion's main gun is like taking the piss while being drunk all the time. There is not even the first shot accuracy. I suspect it was too hard for them to code to put it in. But hey, at least the damage though is notably more than the scarabs, and with that spread and randomness, you're really like a World War I vet. Just spraying and literally praying. If I were you, I would stick with Scarab for any kind of small target killing. Oh, but wait, there is really a truly redeeming quality in Scorpion's weaponry. And that's the motherfucking Seeking Missile, the spunk baby of imbalance. While it's not as powerful as normal missiles from ships, it's still a fucking missile, which makes for a great damage dealing device to everything. And I'm even surprised that it has a lock on, on, on for targets. <laughs> If that's not OP, I don't know what is, especially considering that, remember, you on the foot have only a two-shot garbage baby of a missile launcher in comparison that looks like an aborted leftover twin from Unreal Tournament 1. And you know what's even weirder? On foot, you can't kill friendlies, but in an SRV or ship, no problem! Kill enemies or friendlies, no penalties either way! <laughs> Genius game design there, guys! Another unique aspect of the Scorpion is that it's a multi-seater, so as long as you are in a wing, Oh, wait, actually, in Odyssey, they renamed them. As long as you're in a team... Oh, God, it's a fucking stupid name. As long as you're in a team, you are able to jump in and, like a normal multi-crew, provide the extra pip to the vehicle. And if your driver fails most brain tests and is unable to drive and shoot at the same time, you can take the role of wasting precious ammo while hitting absolutely nothing with the main gun and subsequently running out of missiles. Then begging your friend, and I mean that in the loosest sense of the word possible, for more synthesis of it so you can continue wasting your friend's time and resources. Oh, but let's be honest, even if you had a friend like a normal multi-crew, it's fucking useless, and you would be better off with just two scarabs or scorpions on the field instead. But once you're done farting around with your imaginary friend, there is something interesting about the new SRV. While it is slower, either because it has to be heavier or simply because it's a trade-off or simply because it's expected, it does have a surprising quality that you might consider next time you go climb. It has more torque and better traction. While being slower, it also stops faster than Scarab, that's granted, but where Scorpion only shines is in climbing surfaces. Oh, and if you didn't notice this, in Odyssey, for all SRVs due to the new planet surfaces and random rocks and so on and so forth, developers increased all SRVs, torques and tractions to deal with those things, especially, I suspect. But that means that the both SRVs are better, right? Well, I did my due diligence and tested out at what angle each of them stopped moving forward. Well, for the Scarab, on the planet with a half a G, around 55 degrees was the limit of it, yet Scorpion managed 60 plus and kept on trucking. Though I would question how far heavier and less practical type of vehicle is able to beat out the seemingly purpose-built one that also has more wheels than Scorpion, but I guess it's space magic and I'll leave it at that. And with that, the positives end. And now as for the downsides of this sleek cum bucket, it's its speed, clearly, but what you'll notice far more is that thruster, fuel, and a lack of liftoff. 
Like an impotent penis. You can try and explain to your lover that it's just so thick that you don't have enough juice to make it go up, but the only person you manage to fool is yourself. The fact is that thrusters, even in the super low gravity planets, won't be enough to make you go single midair roll. That's how pathetic it is. So with all those awesome tricks and stunts that those scarabs are doing, nope, none of that. You will fall over and more likely not even go past 90 degree roll before you land, looking like you just jerked yourself on one side. Actually, come to think of it, have you seen those super fat people? Sorry, I mean, have you been to America? Well, if you have, then you probably have seen them fall over at some times and trying to get back up. That's basically you in a scarab. Seriously though, watch your health, it's a serious problem. Don't be a fool and take care of yourself. As for the cargo, well hopefully you enjoy having half of your cargo hold, cause that's exactly what you get in a combat vehicle. Generally, this is expected trade-off. And with that, that's all the negatives. Overall, it's a basic combat tweak of a normal scarab. But without comparing it to Scarab, how does it actually perform? Is it even worth using? Or is it because of the climbing and missile, the best thing since LSD laced condoms? Well, before we can jump into that, we have to talk about Mr. Braben here and frontend developments in general. So, back in 2014, the CEO of the company gave us this wonderful promise. What types of SLV will be released over the course of season two? And don't worry if you can't say anything. About um, so, I, I think the. Uh, I, I don't know offhand, the, the first variants will actually be quite similar to the SRV, but just variants okay. of it, and there Excellent. will be others to come down the line. That's really cool. Will they, uh, as far as you imagine, I don't want to go into too much detail if I can't, but uh, will they just handle differently and, and things like that rather than... Yeah, uh, details to be sorted and also okay. do different things. Great. Awesome. So originally there were planned more SRVs than just the Scarab, which is obvious and like ships easy enough to copy paste once the first one's done. People really wanted a new SRV for years, but it never came. And here's the thing, we all understand that game dev plans can change and it's fine, in fact expected, even if you have promised something. What is not fucking okay is not telling your customers that you have decided not to execute on your promise. See, there I was in 2018 LaveCon, sitting, listening to developers talk, and then came time for Q&A. And just like years before, there was always that one person who asks about new SRVs. And it happened then as well. Do you know what developers said? And I don't mean just the low-level people, I mean without naming any names, a few high-upstanding ones even. I paraphrase. We have no information about that that we can share. Now I talk about the shitty attitude of not only unwillingness to communicate, but downright refusal to do so that I covered in my four-part hypercritical series, especially in the part three, that it kind of does not surprise any of us that developers come saying to us, ho oh, ho, surprise bitches, there is a new SRV, but oops, fuck you Horizons purchasing beloved fans, fuck you and buy Odyssey, then you'll get the new SRV. Thing is, you have to tell your audience that you have change the plan, like with the ship interiors as well, which yes, they actually promised that shit as selling point for Elite back in 2014, months before its release, and equally did not explain where the plan dissipated to. Well, only after massive backlash caved in with pathetic excuses, when Odyssey came out six years later. If you come and explain what, where, why and how, guess what? At least people can understand where you're coming from. At least they can have some sort of a kind of a dialogue with you. But without announcing, telling or explaining anything, how can you think you can have a healthy relationship with your customers, you fucking pricks? And then you wonder why such a cunt like yours truly can have a voice to begin with. So yeah, another lie or promise or whatever that is has to now be mentioned in otherwise fun and interesting bisection of this deceased horse. Okay, so back to the gameplay. How does Scorpion play? W well, god damn it, we have to talk about developers again. God fucking damn it! <clears throat> Will there be updates to ship and SRV combat as well as ground combat? <clears throat> ship combat and SRV combat is in a healthy place right now. Our focus is on ground combat for Odyssey and ensuring that it's balanced well against vehicles. We will look closely at balancing it in upcoming Alpha. <laughs> Are you serious? Wait, you were serious. <laughs> oh, God! 
Again, the complete disconnect is shown. The blue ass of a baboon is visible for everyone. Any real developer would long since realize that the game balance, the ship balance, especially the engineering balance, let alone SRV balance, is in a complete dumpster. But oh hey, let's say, let's say this was real. You could and would take your scorpion to fight a player ship. Because let's be frank, no NPC ship ever would go close to the ground to fight. Ship combat and uh, SRV combat is in a good place right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's in a really good fucking place. Right? Now, by all means, he's using missiles, which is the deadliest weapon for ground troops. But seriously, if you were to go for combat on a planet's surface, especially against ground troops, that's all you would use. And this is with a sidewinder, an A-rated shield on it, and that's it. Yet, try as you might, the SRV and ship combat is not in a good place, and only a complete fuckwit would say that with a straight face. Oh, and for funsies, here's a fight versus a real ship with mixed weaponry. <laughs> that lady is just dancing around yep. your mix. I, I know. <laughs> He's drawing! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh, what? Me? <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's. Uh, and there we go. Ship combat and SRV combat is in a good place. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking joke, not a combat. But still, how about SRV versus SRV? How does Scarab compare to Scorpion? Well, that is actually more interesting. Here it's obvious, so we tried two Scarabs versus one Scorpion. Okay. Actually, play. Hallelujah. Oh my god. Keep your distance, mate. That was that one down quick. I didn't even get a chance to take your shield down, and I was oh god, you. I don't have any shield. And there you go, enough to handily take out one scarab, but not two of them. Though it's kind of a lie to make these comparisons. No one, no one plays like this. See, Elite is basically a single-player game, almost like. 70% of the time you'll be dealing with NPCs when you're in a ship. So now think, how often do you go to a planet's surface and stay in one place out in open for more than 30 minutes? Let alone in SRV or on foot. Simple reality of Elite's normal gameplay is you will never ever meet a player on foot or SRV. Ever. The game world is so massive and so empty that SRV battles will never happen. Instead, in that rare case when somebody comes by, they will take the ship or its weapons and smack you with them. Okay, shield. Online. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I just see a giant really <laughs> Oh god, your corpse literally flew off. And as for feet players, that's even less of a chance. See, in the conflict zones, at least you get to respawn with your feet person, so you get to play with maybe one player who's rocking RTX 4000 series card with maybe 40 frames a second or something, but with SRV, once it's dead, you don't get to respawn with it, nor are there NPCs roaming around with SRVs or flying skimmers, so what's the point? The base design is so bad that if you dare to drive through those narrow pathways with your scorpion, once you get stuck, and you will, with that little pathetic thruster lift, you won't get unstuck in time before the garbage AI will kill you. Um. Oh god! <laughs> oh, I'm stuck! Oh no! Oh, this is activated oh, the this turret! Is so this is not designed for this. Oh, how are you supposed to? Oh, I hate this. So all that's left is to drive around the base and pick off the fresh troops that drop or remote points uh, if you are into such a conflict zone with garbage gameplay. And the thing is, at least back in the day with Horizons, they made missions and bases that would be easier to access and complete with those SRVs. But in Odyssey, what the fuck is the point? In fact, what the fuck is the point of the Scorpion? 
And even then, no one does those SRV missions anymore from Horizon's days, because all of them pay far too little for far too much annoyance to complete them. Conflict zones don't respawn your vehicle, so once it's gone, fuck you, go on foot. But even if you don't suicide on some shitty collision, you are killing enemies just as fast as you would on foot. Yes, I shit you not, it's just as fast and sometimes even safer on foot because how active gameplay FPS games are. But try teaching that to Odyssey developers. I mean, Jesus fuck dancing Christ impaled on a stick if they don't understand that the weapon customization should be removable and not glued on with a game director's jizz, then don't expect SRVs in conflict zones to make sense either. Fuck me, as bad as the new Battlefield is, even they understand how combined arms gameplay works. You could have just played that for an hour and learned about this industry a little bit, but no, it's too hard. So, what is left then? Exploration? No? No, 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 just no. Less fuel and less thruster juice. Beyond climbing mountains, Scorpion is useless for that. What about cargo collecting? Well, beyond Guardian story mission where Scarab is better, maybe this is an alternative for Targoid crap? As it only needs two cargo slots and it's corrosive, so yeah, kinda. And all that's left until Targoid unfought soldiers get released is Guardian Sentinels. Well, with Scarab, they are a little bit too tanky, so yeah, actually, this is the only real instance where I would pick Scorpion over Scarab. Guardian, structured, desecrating, and sentinel killing. Yay! Overall, as I take a step back, I kinda like it, kinda. Well, sound-wise, it feels like childhood when you put a piece of plastic against the spokes of your bike. Visual-wise, it's sleek and nice, and even has an over 9000 reference on the roof. It's a decent wing SRV when you go on the planet and want to drive your friend along, I guess. But it dumps all of its good aspects into damage, which to Elite Dangerous at this point, for SRV at least, is like dumping all your stats into speech skill for any MMORPG. I like the SRV okay. Despite my tirades, it's a nice little thing, but my feelings don't matter, you see. The fact that the gameplay-wise it's nearly useless, the developers have taken it hostage to sell Odyssey and show no remorse so you can go fuck yourself if you want to play with it. So, in a quote, Scorpion was and is a false promise. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Oh man, the ship scale is still fucking amazing. That's the one thing that at least they it is cool. they didn't really need Wait, to work on, idea. but god damn it, it works. Are those are those cat ears? What the fuck? I'm a wizard. <laughs> oh come on, guys! What the? <laughs> Oh, some of these planets. Uh... Help, I'm falling down and I can't get. Oh, never mind. Ooh. All right, let's drive. Try to shoot as many assholes as possible. On FPS. Ah! Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>